so it's just emerging from the tunnel now to a huge roar. The fans of both teams leaping to their feet and giving them a terrific ovation. So uh, Rangers just preparing to kick off. The famous slope has gone, of course. Alec Ray will be relishing such an occasion. Kenny Clark, the referee, his 34th game of the season this afternoon. He'll be hoping to keep his cards in his pocket. He's issued 10 red and 126 yellow so far. And uh, we have two very committed teams here. So the referee checking his watch and we're underway at Easter Road in this crucial match. And right away, it's Barry Ferguson launching the long ball forward, looking for the head of Purcell. Little touch there by Abeladze, but uh, the referee stepping in. And uh, Hibernian have the free kick uh, just a few yards uh, outside the penalty area. Uh, Rangers' intentions made pretty clear uh, very, very quickly. Barry Ferguson getting the ball forward, Purcell winning it, Abeladze trying to get the second ball. So Alec McLeish, last time uh, Hibernian finished uh, third in the Premier League, he was the manager here. There'll be a bit of emotion in him today. He obviously wants his Rangers team to win this championship, but, uh, you know, the lads in the studio were mentioning Bobby Williamson earlier, the fine job he did here with young players. Alec McLeish, here just before him, also helped to uh, rear some of this young team. So it's uh, Ronald Vatterus now, the long ball across the halfway line. Rickson's in there ahead of Ryardin, and a little nudge there. Kenny Clark right on top of the plate, and uh, Rangers have an opportunity now, breaking forward on that left-hand side. Uh, Michael Ball getting well forward, referee pointing out now towards the corner flag, and uh, an early chance for uh, some Rangers pressure. And it's all been uh, in the hips half so far, and again, long ball being pushed forward on the left-hand side. Michael Ball getting forward, as you say, Jerry, very well. Gives Rickson the opportunity to get the ball in to the hips area. So Fernando Rickson carefully placing the ball. Kira Goss is up there, there's plenty of height and weight, but... Uh, that one cleared, it's uh, Rickson again now, sending the high one across, and well handled there by Simon Brown. And the hips keeper just taking his time here, just uh, allowing his men to get upfield, and fired forward now. Anyway, way by Kyria Kors, the hips fans claiming a free kick, but uh, getting nothing. Hips keeping possession now. Almost a nice little ball played through there to a corner, but uh, it was Michael Ball who had the interception. Now it's Fernando Rickson to Nacho Novo. Rickson again, trying to get forward. Closed down there by Stephen Glass. Little touch by a corner. Ryardin tries one. And it's uh, well blocked in the end, and it's uh, Nacho Novo getting it forward to Tars Purso. Laid off by him. Alec Ray, you can see, is under pressure right away. There's going to be no breathing space at all in this match. Uh, a corner rushing in there and making the challenge. Well, as you would expect, it's uh, 100 miles an hour football so far. And here come Hibbs again. O'Connor trying to take on Andrews, and uh, oh, good effort there. And uh, well, Wackenhuis decided just to punch that one away. But the battle between Reardon and Rickson on this side should be very interesting. Reardon on the ball here, he wants to get forward, as does Rickson. And again, it's Hibbs uh, causing some pressure here. The long ball forward, O'Connor battling hard against uh, Andrews, but uh, the referee again well up with the play, and he indicates it's a goal kick to Rangers. So Reardon there, uh, certainly he's made a decent start to this uh, match, as had Fernando Rickson, he's trying to get down the right-hand side at every opportunity. And here is Rickson again, closed down by Riordan. Marvin Andrews looking for Torso, it's just beyond him, and uh, Novo was racing in there on the right-hand side. This is Brown, oh, almost caught there by uh, Buffel, who's been in good form recently, scoring a few goals as well. It's Murray, the Hibernian captain, sending it through, a corner giving chase, Rickson covering a lot of ground up. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of room on this right hand side just because of the nature of the players. Reardon likes to get on the ball as does Rickson, and uh, I feel that the game could open from this side. This is Barry Ferguson for Rangers. Kierkegaard, 
the Vic International. Ferguson studying his options. Uh, Buffal makes himself available. Ferguson again, looking for Avon Lagze, who's making a good run into the area, but uh, once again, can goalkeeping by Simon Brown. This time it's Andrews forcing it forward. Brown can't uh, manage to get that one under control, but uh, Whittaker got it through. And Thomas Buffal does well to regain possession for Rangers. He takes the return there from uh, Barry Ferguson. Out now to uh, shot at Avon Lagze. Avon Lagze going in the outside of the defender, but uh, just too much in that one. And behind it goes for the goal kick. So uh, Kiri, of course, uh, jumping high for that one, getting another touch. And it's uh, trying to get forward here, but uh, the challenge goes in from uh, Andrews, and the referee doesn't like it. And. Uh, a chance here now for Hibernia to apply some pressure. And uh, Glass, uh, who normally operates uh, on the left-hand side, has got a terrific uh, left foot on him. And we'll get the in-swinger here, right into the near post, and uh, Rangers living dangerously there. So just coming up for the 10-minute mark. Oh, there's a mistake by the goalkeeper! Oh, no goes hit the post! That is unbelievable! Simon Brown... Well, what was he thinking of there? He gets away with it, and uh, Nacho Novo, who's failed to score in his last nine league games, was given a golden opportunity. Now, you see what exa exactly what happened there. Jerry, you mentioned before that there was a bit of moisture on the field, but not there. The ball held up on the turf and uh, deceived uh, uh, Simon Brown in the goal, and Novo misses an open goal. Well, what an incident that was. If that had gone in, it would certainly have uh, put pressure on elsewhere. But uh, what uh, an incredible opportunity there for uh, Nacho Novo. The ball just spinning. Novo first time at Luke Netbound off the post and into the hands of the goalkeeper. And what an escape for Tony Mowbray's first signing from Colchester. So uh, Hibbs breathe a sigh of relief and it's uh, Riordan coming forward now. He's going to try one. Well, he's got the confidence uh, to have a go, has Derek Riordan. Again, that's uh, Ivan Sproul trying to uh, get forward, but uh, there's Avon Ladze stepping in now for Rangers to Alec Gray. Plenty of movement in front of him, and uh, as a vote, also makes himself available, breaking down this right hand side. Trying to get the outside of Smith, Purser doing well, forcing it through, and a chance here for Avon Ladze, and he's blocked there at the last moment. And uh, Stephen Whitaker. I think making an important contribution there. Excellent work there by uh, Dado Perso. Avalanzi almost added to the two goals he scored last week. Stephen Whitaker just being in the right place at the right time. Good defender on his part. So uh, Dado Perso, who's uh, been a bit of a scourge to Hibs this season. Four goals in three games against him. As uh, Michael Ball sends that win in. Oh, the keeper's struggling a bit again there, but uh, takes it at the second attempt. Barry Ferguson now for uh, Rangers, laid off by Ray to Andrews, it's Ferguson again. Through for Perso, nice little turn by him, out to Avaladze. Avaladze now attacking Whitaker, ball's coming on the outside to give him an option, but uh, the challenge goes in there uh, from Buzelin. So still no scoring here at uh, Easter Road as uh, Michael Ball takes this throw, plays it short to Perso, takes the return, space at a premium, back it goes to uh, Ferguson, tees it up for Ray, he's going to try one here, well, it was certainly worth the trying, but uh, just one goal for uh, Alec Ray uh, this season. And uh, Hibs are making Rangers play the ball forward, perhaps a little bit sooner than they should be doing, I think Alex McLeish should want his players just to be a bit more composed in midfield. Of course, a point suits Hibernian this afternoon. It would have to be a very dramatic uh, turnaround of goal difference, in fact, uh, uh, to deprive them of third place and the European spot. So they'll be quite happy, I would imagine, with things so far. They've made a decent start to this match with uh, just over 22 minutes gone. And still no scoring as uh, Andrews clears, but straight to Riordan. 
Right, and uh, getting away from Nova, who slipped, and also from Rickson, trying to take on Andrews as well. Just a wee bit ambitious, perhaps, in the end. Andrews uh, pointing out towards Novo, again trying to use his pace, and Novo gets the touch there. And, uh, he was challenged, did well, but uh, in the end it came to nothing. But, uh, Murray was with him all the way there. Ferguson again, Andrews makes himself available. Andrews uh, drifting forward down that right-hand side and uh, Riordan uh, going with him. Uh, it's uh, Purso, Rickson's well forward, the ball through to him and uh, oh, a solid challenge there uh, by Murray. Yeah, that's how competitive the game is. It's headed on by Glass, little touch by uh, Novo. Rickson back to Novo, an early shot by him and a good effort. And uh, that was smart play by Rangers, quick thinking, and almost brought the opening goal. Yeah, some nice play there from Rangers. Rickson found Nova in a little bit of space. The snapshot, I think, was covered by Simon Brown. He got down pretty well. Just curved away at the last second. So Nacho Novo, 24 goals this season, 18 of them in the championship. But hoping to end a bit of a drought here this afternoon. He's had a couple of opportunities. He struck the post early on after... Uh, Mistake by uh, Simon Brown, who was deceived by the bounce of the ball. So here's uh, Andrews, willing to get involved in attacks as much as possible. But uh, Rickson can't control that uh, ball from Purso. Rangers really have to score here and hope uh, nothing happens at uh, Fair Park, meanwhile it's Buffel getting in, Alec Ray coming forward now, well, Adam Laxey had peeled off towards the far post, but uh, I'm afraid it was not the quality of cross that was required. Well, Persa did very well initially, and it was Gary Smith who got in the challenge on Buffel, but Alex Ray was caught in two minds there, wasn't sure what to do, should have maybe shot first time, but his uh, effort when it did come, turned so harmlessly over the bar. We hear that uh, Celtic have taken the lead. Uh, Chris Sutton, the scorer of Celtic's goal, and of course that's uh, brought a loud roar here from the Hibernian fans. So Chris Sutton gives Celtic the lead at uh, Fair Park. Through for Novo. Didn't reach Barry Ferguson and uh, Beslin plays it through for Glass. He's well challenged by Kiriakos. Avan lacks it. What a great effort he's putting in. They're about to leave Rangers, but uh, he's uh, performed well this afternoon. But now a chance for Hibernian to break. And they're playing with a lot of zest, a lot of spirit here. It's Brown surging forward. Support from Rowden. But Alec Ray flies into that challenge, and here comes Murray now, just ahead of Purso, and the referee indicates that's uh, Rangers' ball. Again, the pace of the game was so fast that uh, there's been not much composed football, all of it half and puff, but uh, certainly good to watch. Motherwell nil, Celtic 1, Aberdeen nil, Hearts nil, Hibernia nil, Rangers nil, and it's Rangers trying to get forward, trying to uh, really kick-start their afternoon here, but uh, they're facing a spirited performance from Hibernian. Rickson to Ray. Oh, that's a, a nice little turn there by Thomas Buffell. This is Brown. Buzlin plays it through, it's cut out though by uh, Andrews. Almost breaks for Novo, still what to be done though, and the sliding challenge from uh, Buzlin. Played through by uh, Whitaker now, and uh, left by Kiriakos. Well, four shutouts uh, Waterhouse has had in uh, 14 appearances. As he hits that uh, high one forward, Novo. 
Headed away though by Murray. Avalanche is there, he's going to try one. And, uh, you know, for a player just about to leave, he's putting in uh, a mighty effort here this afternoon. A good effort there from Avalanche. The ball comes out, Hibbs defended well. Even at this point, they were closing Avalanche down. Simon Brown was confident it was going wide. Struck it well, but not, uh, not well enough, not on target. And of course, he got such a good send off at uh, Ibrooks last week after scoring a couple of goals. Yeah, he's been a very, very good servant for Rangers, and uh, his goal record has been exceptionally good. But, uh, it's time to move on. Alex McLeish to sign. There's not a new contract on offer for Avaladze, and uh, he'll be parting with the club in summer. Coming up for the 40-minute uh, mark, and uh, still no scoring here at uh, Easter Road. At Motherwell, it's Motherwell nil, Celtic one, Chris Sutton the scorer at Pataudry Stadium, Aberdeen nil, Hearts nil. And uh, that certainly suits Sabernian as the chase, this uh, final uh, European spot from league football. And uh, that's Riordan now getting a touch with his head, cut out by Andrews. Way well, uh, claims for a high boot there, but the referee right up with the play, waves play on. O'Connor tries to get that one into the middle and... Uh, Waterhouse uh, just uh, keeping that in play. There's Purso doing well again. Through for Thomas Buffel. Novo supporting on the right-hand side. Purso keeping his run going. Still it's Novo. Jinking away, first of all, from Murray and then trying to get away from uh, Smith. And uh, down he goes. And the free kick has been awarded. Smith claiming a bit of a dive there by Novo, but there was certainly contact. Yeah, clever play by Novo as he nips in and out here on the right hand side and he's looking for the foul at this point because he's going nowhere fast Gary Smith got too close to him there and, uh, allowed Noble to get the foul yeah, Gary Smith is uh, one of the old heads and uh, he was uh, certainly caught out there and uh, certainly psychologically Trevor this would be a great time for Rangers to get a goal because it would certainly make Celtic think again yeah, I think that's that's important because whatever happens here as well, of course, will feed back to Fir Park as well, and that could be very interesting should Rangers score from here. So, the opportunity for Rangers, the clock ticking down. We're into stoppage time here in the first half at Easter Road. A lot of movement inside the area. Ball sends it across. Marvin Andrews is up there, but a disappointing end to it. Uh, of Rangers. We really failed to capitalise. Yeah, an inch or two in it, the ball comes in for Michael Boss, a decent ball. But uh, Martin Andrews is having to go backwards just to get it. Slightly over hit for him. And uh, can't take advantage. Well, the Ibrox Club have won the last ten meetings with the Bernian, scoring freely. 28 goals to hip six, but this afternoon so far, with the first half just about to draw to a conclusion, Rangers toiling to put Hibs under any real pressure, and there, in fact, goes that half-time whistle. So the uh, players leaving the field, Dado Perso there, giving his all, so too has uh, Riordan, but uh, Trevor, it really has been uh, a first half full of endeavour, not a lot of skill, but I think exactly what we thought it would be. So, uh, no changes. In uh, either lineup, Hibbs' last league win over Rangers was in October 2000. Uh, David Zatelli scored the only goal, and uh, the Hibbs manager was Alex McLeish. Hibbs have had a lean spell uh, against the Ibrox club, but uh, they did beat Rangers last season in the League Cup semi-finals and penalties, although they went on to uh, lose that final to Livingston. So Rangers in possession, bright sunshine now, and uh, Easter Road, perfect uh, playing conditions. And there's uh, Murray, Ian Murray, who's been linked with Rangers, could well be joining them over the next uh, few weeks. It'll certainly be a loss uh, to Hibernian if he goes. Once again, you see the pace of uh, Ivan Sproul. Both teams still with uh, absolutely everything to play for as Barry Ferguson sweeps that one forward. See the commitment of uh, Gary Caldwell. Now it's a shot at Avaladze. Sending in a knock one ball there. And here's Nacho Novo laying it off. And what an opportunity for Thomas Buffel. And well, Alec McLeish knows that. Well, good play uh, from Nacho Novo, certainly reading the ball as it came across from Avaladze. Novo read it there and burst forward. 
played Buffel in nicely. And uh, maybe it was a left-footed shot that Buffel needed there. Waiting for the ball to come across his body. And uh, the opportunity went to begging. Well, he's been in goal-scoring form recently, three goals in the previous uh, two games. Step over there by uh, Buffel, who has to commit himself. He does well, gets it away from Brown. Through to Purcell, a little touch by him. Buffel again, he's got Novo on the right-hand side. In comes that to Novo, drives it across! And Purcell, in there at the near post, and Novo is absolutely delighted with himself. And Alec McLeish has a lifeline here at Easter Road. Novo spotted, coming in on the right-hand side. Nice little pass through to him. Yeah, Thomas Buffel here, Jerry's done exceptionally well, very composed, waiting for Nova to make up the ground. He's fired it in, comes off a hips defender, I'm not sure there was, I think it was Ian Murray, as he came across and just deflected it in. In fact, it's Gary Colwell gets the last touch, takes it past Simon Brown. And uh, I didn't think the goal was coming, I didn't feel like the goal was coming. One bit of quality play from Buffel and Novo, and Alex McLeese is a happier man. And Caldwell certainly had to commit himself there because Purcell made the near post run. And yeah, there were bodies, yeah, there's certainly bodies coming in, and uh, Caldwell was committed. He had to try and make some kind of contact. The contact he's made wasn't good enough. And it's Hips now threatening at the other end. So Havelia nil, Rangers one here at uh, Easter Road. Marvel nil, Celtic one at Fir Park, and Aberdeen two, Hearts nil at Pataudry Stadium. And there's uh, Riordan just keeping that in play. Headed down by Barry Ferguson, Rickson. Back now towards Marvin Andrews. Cross for Kiri Koss. Michael Ball has made himself available. Wide left. His space quickly closed down though uh, by Dean Shields. Kiri Koss again. Well, the firing high balls in at Natchanovo, which is not exactly what he wants. And uh, you saw what he could do on the right-hand side uh, when the ball was played into him. Well, it's Marvin Andrews. And the touch forward. Shot at Abeladze, he spots Nacho Novo. It's a high upward ball. Novo does well to control that in a very tight situation. Played off by Alec Ray to Abeladze. Kiriakos. Ferguson to Rickson. Well, again, we see Hibbs getting themselves nicely positioned just to close down Rangers, and giving them any space. They don't mind them having the ball and playing across midfield, as long as they keep them at arm's length. But, you know, if the Rangers were to get another goal here, Trevor and Aberdeen uh, score another at Pataudry, suddenly it'll be the nerves of the Hibbs fans that they're jangling. And that's exactly why the Hibbs uh, players are doing the defensive duties as... Uh, closely as they are at the moment. There are five goals uh, in terms of goal difference uh, between uh, Hibbs and Aberdeen, but uh, with Hibbs scoring more, uh, goals for column, it actually means that uh, well, was, that extra goal is required by Aberdeen. So just under ten minutes, plus stoppage time left here at Easter Road in this final League day of the season, the championship deciding day. And it's uh, Fernando Rickson for Rangers. As things stand, Celtic will take their 40th championship, but there could be dramas ahead. We've seen so many of these final days and what nerves can do to players, how things can change so quickly. And if you look at... Uh, the scenes in England last week, various dramas that happened there. Anything can happen. This is Ball for Rangers. Avaladze. Kiriakos. Rangers content to keep possession. They've done the job, as Trevor was saying, they need something to happen elsewhere.
Well, just seeking their 150th league win over Hibs and uh, hoping it does lead to a 51st championship. The first one incidentally shared uh, with Dumbarton. But, uh, Alex McLeish came here to get a victory. That's how it stands at the moment. And uh, very muted Rangers support at the moment. They know it's not going their way at Fir Park. So whatever happens here, as it stays like this, it's not going to be good enough. So it's uh, Kiria Kos now, reluctantly <laughs> crossing the halfway line. So Rangers looking for the miracle. A goal by Motherwell. They have done the job here by the look of things. This thing stand, this suits both. The Bernian and Rangers of only Motherwell can uh, pinch a goal from Celtic at Fir Park. Alec McLeish looking for a miracle here. And he'll be thinking back to, well, a huge roar goes up in the stand, the Rangers stand here, and Motherwell, we are told, have scored. Well, this is absolutely remarkable. The Rangers fans are going mad here. Mullerwell have scored against Celtic at Fir Park to make it one goal apiece. So we're into the two minutes of stoppage time. It's Hibernian nil, Rangers one. It's Mullerwell one, Celtic one. And you know, the, the, the strange thing is, despite that goal in there at, you know, at Fir Park, has not changed the game here at all. Hibs are still happy just to sit out the rest of the game, as are Rangers. The tension is unbearable here, and I'm quite sure it's the same at the far end of the country. As Trevor said, if Alec McLeish wins this win, he could go on to win a few more, because uh, well, Rangers have scrapped throughout the season to keep in touch. This will be remembered as one that Celtic uh, let slip, not once, but twice. The referee, he looks at his watch there. Alec McLeish is signalling here. Mullerwell scored again, and McDonald again, it's Mullerwell 2, Celtic 1. It's incredible, it's unbelievable. Look at the celebrations there. What a turnaround here this afternoon. You could never have imagined this. Rangers were happy just to keep possession, hoping for an equaliser. They haven't got one miracle, they've got two, and it looks as if Rangers are about to win a most unlikely championship, and it's all over, and Alec McLeish is swamped by his backroom staff. Fans are going mad here. The Stewards will do well to keep on that. Well, the faces tell them all, they cannot believe it. Rangers are champions of Scotland for the 51st time in their history. I was among many that never thought Rangers could come back and win this. And Celtic must be absolutely shattered at their part, but this is about Rangers now. And let's not forget two of these scenes of Rangers' joy as fans invade the field that Hibernian have also qualified to play in Europe. of Rangers clinching the 35th league title here back in 1974-75 under Jock Wallace. That day, they halted Celtics nine in a row. Before that, Kilmarnock had won the championship. It had been a long time since Rangers had won the league. And uh, fans on the field here now celebrating. <laughs> Trevor, there have been a lot of dramatic finishes. Did you see that one coming? Well, no, I couldn't see it coming, I have to say. That the way that the, the uh, well, certainly how Celtic went ahead at Motherwell, thought they would have had enough to hold on to that. We know how depleted Motherwell have been. And uh, yet, Rangers did what they had to do. It hasn't been a convincing victory here, but it was enough. 
Hibs have obviously got what they've wanted as well, and uh, that's the UEFA Cup slot. So, just an amazing afternoon. Premier League Champions Trophy is delivered right in front of the Rangers fans here at Easter Road. And out come the joyous players now. Rangers Champions of Scotland for the 51st time. And a Russo, who has made his contribution with 21 goals this season. Barry Ferguson, back from Blackburn. Thomas Gabal, who had a terrific game this afternoon. Alec Ray, who went round the houses after being freed by Rangers. Marvin Andrews as well, he got another miracle today. No, it's a fantastic moment for these players. Five minutes to go in the game this afternoon. They, I'm sure they didn't feel as if they were going to be experiencing the wonderful feeling that they're feeling now. For any professional to win the league that they're playing in is always the highlight. And Alec McLeish now has won seven trophies as a manager of Rangers, two league championships, two Scottish Cups and three league Cups, and add all of that to an illustrious career a member of Aberdeen's European Cup Winners Cup team in 1983, three championship medals with the Dons, capped 77 times for Scotland. Has he ever had a day as dramatic as this one? Well, I was at Ibrook Stadium a few years ago when Paul Gascoigne scored a hat-trick. Aberdeen were leading by a goal to nil, and Gascoigne turned on the style to clinch the championship. Then two years ago, that other dramatic day, again at Ibrook Stadium, when Rangers won on goal difference. And it's starting to sink in now, isn't it? Led Motherwell to second place in the SPL back in 94-95, so he's had success everywhere he's been, has Alec McLeish. Appointed manager of Rangers on December the 11th, 2001. And Barry Ferguson who raised that trophy two years ago, has got that winning feeling again. Rangers also won the League Cup, but this is the one they all want, and of course, while it doesn't give automatic entry to the Champions League, it hopefully will make it just that bit easier for Alec McLeish and his men. Back in the ground, uh, where he took a big chance, he stepped down a division, more or less, he took on Hibernian when they were Billy really heading for the first division, brought them back through. And he's back here with Rangers today. And uh, Herbert Ronald Waterhouse. He's filled in so well for Stefan Kloss. And he is a fourth championship medal now, three with uh, PSV Eindhoven. Alec McLeish signed them from uh, Manchester City at the turn of the year. And the Rangers uh, bench players quite rightly taking their place for the trophy presentation. Alan McGregor, Stephen Thompson, Robert Malcolm, Chris Buck, Ross McCormick, Stephen Smith and Peter Lovett-Brands out there. And uh, what a great day for the youngsters as well, like Ross McCormick and uh, Stephen Smith. As I said, a special day for players. In moments like this, uh, you go a bit daft, to be quite honest with you. They're enjoying the moment, and rightly so, a long, hard season. A season that's ebbed and flowed at times. Each of the old firm teams have tried to throw it away, the championship. It comes down to the last few minutes of the season, and it's Rangers who clinch it. So, Rangers lost just one of their away games this season. That was uh, to Celtic last August. So, away from home, uh, the record has been terrific. If they can just emulate that at home now, in the new season, who knows what they might win. But today is a day of celebration for all of these players. Morris Ross there, absolutely delighted. He had his uh, big day out in the League Cup final, of course, when he scored. And that occurred so well when he was uh, lining up uh, against uh, Porto uh, last year in the Champions League final for Monaco. In Gelson Kipchen, he had a uh, little idea that uh, a deal like this was ahead as well. He had disappointment on that occasion, but uh, today... He has the medal to prove success. So a warm congratulations all round. Really has been one of the most remarkable afternoons. 
the Hibs uh, fans uh, celebrated uh, just before this. Let's not forget it's uh, a big, big day for Hibs and Tony Mowbray. They took their lap of honour past their excited uh, supporters. They finished third today and they have European football to look forward to. They have a young team who can take them places. There's a not, uh, not so much a youngster there, Alec Ray, uh, now uh, 35 years of age. And uh, he's another year of his contract to go. Nacho Novo. Well, the goals had dried up towards the end of the season, but he made a vital contribution today because it was his shot that was uh, deflected into the back of the net uh, to give Alec McLeish such a happy day. So to a man, the Rangers fans have uh, stayed in the stand, as you would expect, uh, just in front of the Rangers players. Quite a number of Hibs fans have stayed behind as well to enjoy the day. And the manager receives his medal. Jan Wouters is there as well. He just signed a new one-year contract. Who knows, the happenings of today might uh, mean longer contracts all round. Remember, Alec McLeish was a uh, fairly serious depths at one point earlier in this season but he's managed to claw his way back won the league cup match celtic in terms of the old firm games but it looked as though he'd be undone by other matches until the final minutes this afternoon the rangers had done what they had to do they needed a miracle from elsewhere and motherwell produced not just one goal for them but two and rangers are champions of scotland I've seen a lot of these uh, final days and uh, this one will certainly be up there with the rest of them in terms of the, the intensity, the sheer drama and uh, Shot Avaladze in the foreground there was certainly one of the star performers this afternoon for Fernando Rickson needing a bit of a help up it's a very heavy trophy but he'll manage it Rangers champions for the 51st time So Barry Ferguson held the trophy as captain two years ago. Fernando Rickson has it today. And Alec McLeish with Andy Watson and Jan Wouters will have, I suspect, the mother of all parties tonight, as will these supporters here and the ones watching on television around the world. And the champion's anthem sounds around Easter Road. And uh, Shota Avaladze, who knows how to celebrate these occasions. We remember him in his sombrero and everything else a couple of years ago. There he is, high above the ball. And he deserves his uh, place up there today. Himself and uh, Thomas Buffel, I thought, were excellent. And he watched in the background there, just behind Alec McLeish, holding aloft the trophy. He's worked hard all year. He's been away looking at players around Europe as Rangers try to rebuild now for the challenges ahead and look towards competition in football so this unremarkable season has its remarkable ending that is the most important in my career I got to want to enjoy it with our fantastic fans have you got a message for the fans I says thank you for the support and you know always being with me in good times and bad times well, what would we do without those critics to fire them up? They're loving their day out there. Nacho Novo contributing with uh, his uh, 25 goals, 19 of them in the league. And uh, certainly a player who's come on from Wraith Rovers uh, to Dundee. And then to Rangers. And these fans applauding him and the other players this afternoon. In terms of drama, you couldn't beat it. As I said, the argument about the quality of the football and other matters for another day, but uh, you don't see so many of these days in a lifetime covering this game. And when that uh, initial roar went up uh, from the Rangers' end of the ground, no one could quite believe it. But uh, Alec McLeish then signalled that it was all over at Fur Park, and the whistle went a short time later here. And uh, what an afternoon. Well, Rangers won five of the last six games, so that was a, a decent finish, despite losing Celtic to Ibrox, uh, five wins out of six. And Alec McLeish using 32 different players in this campaign, 17 different goal scorers. 
and I wonder if it's sunk in yet, Trevor. Well, I think it just about is now with uh, with Alex acknowledging the crowd, the big part that they've played. But it has been, uh, you know, a, a real season of using lots of players, lots of contributions from a lot of people. Nacho Novo certainly has to be uh, uh, congratulated on his goals, as does Purcell. I can imagine this will go on for some considerable time. Rangers came here today seeking their 150th league win over Hibernian. They did it, and in the process, they won the 51st championship. The last few weeks, uh, we, we still believe uh, we had to uh, produce and, and win, and uh, that's with D, and I, at the end, I think we deserve it. You look like you had a great game today. You've settled down. Are you more comfortable on the side now? Yeah, of course, and uh, how, how you can be uh, not uh, settling uh, with this kind of public. Any message for the fans? Well, uh, this year we went two trophies, next year we have to win three. It just shows you, you should never, ever, ever stop believing. Oh, absolutely true, and uh, the, Rangers fan, the Rangers fans indeed will not be in a rush to leave the ground, as will the players not be in a rush to leave the pitch either. Let's go now to Shota Avaladze. Shot at an incredible afternoon. I've been saying that time and time again. But your your last game for the club, and, and what a way to finish your Rangers career. Credit to the SPL. It was a great season, to be honest. All the teams, professionally, you know, they get the maximum they could get. He smarter than anyone. You could see how unreadable is the football. We lose, we win, we lose, we win. But it was a, something you will wish in dream. It comes through. That's football. That's why we love so much this. Is this title win even better than two seasons ago? Yeah, we don't want it. I don't want it to compare. It's just it's another title. Great day. And I'm really happy. It's going to be difficult for you to leave this club. It's always difficult to leave the club like a Rangers. But what are you going to wish more than this? So it's a great. Well done, Shota. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, Stefan Kloss looks on there. He's made a big contribution to uh, Rangers' successes in recent years. And uh, he's got a bit of a battle in his hands next uh, season to get his place back, but uh, he's such a quality goalkeeper. And if Rangers can hold on to Ronald Butterhouse, as uh, they'll be hoping to do, and they have a fit Stefan Kloss back again, uh, that uh, certainly solves another problem for Alec McLeese. I must say... I'm pleased for Alex McLeish, he's one of the good guys in the game, but the good guys don't always win. And uh, you've got to earn it, and uh, as he said at the end of the match, as he said at the end of the match, uh, if you finish on top, you're champions. That's exactly what's happened. People can say Celtic blew it, and <laughs> I don't think there's any argument about that, but it's a day for Rangers celebrations. It was quite uh, remarkable at the end as well, the Hibs fans staying behind. Everyone winners here this afternoon. squad will be strengthened it will have to be strengthened if the challenges are to be met and it will be the same on the other side of Glasgow too I think they both old firm clubs becoming more and more aware that uh, while it's great to be top dogs here both have got to make a better impact on the European stage so the celebrations just about over now another show of the trophy to these supporters, I wonder how many really felt today in the journey from Glasgow and other parts of Scotland and, in fact, from around the world, came here thinking it could happen. But so long as it stayed only 1-0 for Celtic at Motherwell, there was the chance. Rangers get that vital breakthrough on the hour. That turnover firing the ball in, it came off Caldwell, hit the back of the net, and that made all the difference. Suddenly the afternoon was turned on its head. And we now have uh, Barry Ferguson with Michael Douglas. Barry, congratulations. You come back to this club to win trophies. You've done exactly that today. Uh, it was great uh, coming back, winning the League Cup, but to win the league, it's, it's great. And it was great, it's great for the, the fans and whatever, going right at the last day. But to win it, we were always confident going into the game. First half was pretty even, but the second half, the gaffer of the word was at half time just to go out and go for it. And we did that, and we were the best team by a mile. How can you explain the, the feeling this evening? It was an unexpected win in so many ways. Yeah, it was. Um, uh, obviously, Celtic, I've got a lot, of, a lot of thoughts for Celtic, obviously. They're a great team, a lot of great players. We, we thought 
a lot of us thought they would go there and win easy, but all credit to Muddle. Uh, they've dug a great result out and we've won the league. You have to think this is a Rangers squad. This is a Rangers squad now that has the look of, of one that could go on to be successful in seasons to come. It's a young team. Yeah, it's a, it's a young team. Um, I still feel well, the gaffer still eager to get a few few more players in. Um, and hopefully we can do that and we can build on. You were here when it was clinched on the final day two seasons ago. How does this one compare? No, this is better. This is. I left for 18 months and I've come back and this is what I've come back for and it's great. Thanks, Barry. Well done. Cheers. So Barry Ferguson showing great maturity there. Uh, feeling some sympathy for Celtic and of course that's a feature of Alex McLeish's interviews as well. He talks about his great rivals and uh, shows respect and it's always a good thing to see that uh, between the old firm. That's the fans starting to drift away now. I will show you. Another wee dance movie. We will see the music there. Champagne. Champagne is for the woman. <laughs> for the boys. For the men. What do men drink? Milk. <laughs> I know it was 1-1 one, one and it was terrible, it was terrible. 